Hey everyone, Cycreasin here, and in this lesson I'm going to be covering the shoulder, and pretty much the whole shoulder girdle, so I'm going to be focusing on the deltoid and uh, the trapezius a lot. So let's start, and I'm going to start with just getting a head down, and the reason I'm doing this is so I have uh, proportion, so I can measure the rest based on the head, so let's say the head's this big, well, then I can do that measurement where split it in half to get the eyes, and then this in half to get the nose, and then duplicate this to get the pit of the neck, um, and then duplicate that same distance again, and this is where the rib cage splits, and then the same. So this is the area for the rib cage, and the rib cage, of course, it goes higher than the pit of the neck because the neck fits in a hole that is here, right? So now we have the head and the rib cage, and I've explained that proportional measurement in other videos, so you can see those. Um, so here we go, rib cage, and I might as well just duplicate not duplicate, but uh, copy over this so I can do a side and a back view as well. Oops. All right, so side here. Get the ear. I think the ear is really important when doing the side view to find, I don't know, where the, the neck goes behind and you got the neck coming out and so this is the top of the back it comes forward I can just divide this in half so here's the other rib cage and notice that this slopes forward and you don't see that when it's just in a front view but it's it is really important actually to to feel that that this is sloping forward like so and then the back so let's just carry that over one more measurement and so back here actually we need this for the cranium back of the skull be here and then you got the neck and rib cage. All right, so I'm gonna try and keep things pretty simple. Um, this whole thing is pretty complicated, but I'll try and simplify it as best as I can. Uh, let's see, what else? Just get the, the back of the jaw just because we can include that and now what we have to focus on is pretty much the meat of it which are a few special bones I mean they're not special but they're important for this lesson bones and uh, a couple muscles so the bones that are of vital importance are and these are bones you're gonna have to memorize are the the collar bones uh, also known as the clavicle. So let's get those in there. So before I do that, there's a sternum right in the middle. And the sternum bone kind of looks like a tie, kind of like that. But anyway, so the clavicles attach to the stern sternum. And they have a very interesting shape. So the shape of the clavicle is, so let's say this is the sternum, right? And then you have a clavicle going this way, but we'll only do the one on this side. So what happens is you get, it goes up and let's just say the length is, and I'm just going to guess at the length on this because I usually I use the figure to determine the length. Let's say the length is this long, right? Well, if we divide this into three parts, so one, two, three, the clavicle, it goes like this, it goes this way for one third of it and then it goes 
this way. So it's going back in space. It's not going up. Like I'm not drawing this as if it's maybe it's hold on. I'll do this first and then it goes this way. So it's not that it's really going up so much. I mean, it does lift up for men and it sort of goes down for women, but it's more that you've got three portions, one that's going this way and then one that's going this way and then one that's going this way. So it goes this way and then back and then straight across. So this is very important. Now, if I was doing it on, let's say, a three-quarter view, that might be a better way of explaining it. What's happening is here's a rib cage. Here's the hole where the neck comes out of. Then you've got your sternum in the middle. And then you've got your clavicle. And it goes straight across. Like so. And then it goes back. And then it goes across again. So you got this type of shape. And uh, many people describe it like the handlebars of a, on a bike. It's a common way of seeing it. So you got this. So that's the first one that we have to worry about is the clavicle. Now the next, oh, so we could get that in, so up, and then the, like, how far out do we go for the clavicle? Well, the way you do that is, see, we have this measurement for the sternum, and uh, again, if you're not sure how, how tall that is, you get the head, you divide it into two to get the eye line, and then divide the eyes to the chin in half to get where the nose is. And then you take this distance and you duplicate it to get the pit of the neck. And then you duplicate it one more time to get the length of the sternum. All these distances are the same as the uh, length of the clavicle. So the way I do it is I just look at the sternum and then I take that and I copy that distance, so it's kind of like a square here. So yeah, this is how long the clavicle goes, but again, as we said, it's not just, doesn't just go straight across, it goes like this way, and then this way, and then this way. But the entire length is the same as that. It's, so it comes out like that. And then on the other side, the same thing, this way, this way, this way, and you can, probably just get used to seeing this distance. You don't always have to measure it. Like after a while, you just can sort of visualize it that way. So on this back view, just start here and just get this distance and then put it there. So it goes this way and then it's going this way, this way and then this way, right? Same thing here, this way, this way, and this way. And I'm just gonna erase where it's overlapping the, uh, the rib cage, because this is hiding it, right? Like it goes in front. And this is also important. See here on the front view, right? We see that pit of the neck. We don't see that on the back view because that pit is at an angle like that, right? It's sloping downwards. So here's the pit of the neck, here's the back. And so from the front, our eyes are looking from here. We see this opening shape, but from the back, we do not. So that is important. Okay, so we have the clavicles here. Um, but now on the back we have, and here I can do it where it just, on the side view, just sort of comes out, comes like that. And it's going to be hard to see on the side view where the clavicles are. Maybe I can try. You can kind of see it, right? You can kind of see it. They're pretty skinny. Um, 
Okay, but on the back, now we have the friend of the clavicle. So there's, there's some relationships in this. There's a few friends. And the clavicle's good buddy is the scapula. So we're going to draw in the scapula. Now, the scapula is... I'll do this something. The scapula's got this kind of triangle shape. Now, it's not perfectly a triangle like that, but it kind of is. Now, the thing is, the height of the scapula, it's that same measurement. Remember we said the height of the sternum? And then the from the head to the bottom of the nose? And uh, the clavicle, like how long the clavicle is this way? So if we had it going this way, this way, this way. This is the same as the height of the scapula. And so it's kind of like a triangle, but again, it's more complicated. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to view it like a triangle, okay? So it's more like that. Keep it like a triangle. But then it's got this thing where near the top, there's this part that comes off and it actually lifts part of the scapula, but it's like the bone lifts off it. So you get two portions. So this is the back view of the scapula, right? And then you've got this and this part is now this part coming here goes in front of this part. So, so we've got it going like this. And Got like a notch here at the end. Anyway, so from the front view, you would see this part sort of protruding out from behind and then coming forward, like so. Sort of like that. And then from this part, which is directly behind this part, there's like another bump that comes out like here. That's the, uh, it's called the coracoid process. Anyway, so there's that bump. So you basically have a bump here, here, and here. But this is the interesting part of the scapula, that, that part that sort of comes out. And again, I'm simplifying it. So back to this. Okay, so now we know the height of the scapula is the same as the height of this or this. So it's about that height. But how, um, how wide is it? Well, the way you do that is you just take the figure and then, or take the rib cage anyway, and you can fit a scapula in between. So you can fit three scapulas. So just make sure, like, get the height and get the triangle and something like that. So you see how some of this peaks out, or, well, not in the back view, because you wouldn't see it, but there's a triangle for the scapula that in the front view you would see from behind the scapula, here and here. And you get that part that sticks out Comes, so it's going at an angle. It's like, I don't know, maybe this angle, like that. So it's coming up at that angle. And then it goes there. And you want the same thing on this side. Okay, so now we have that. We have the scapula and we have the clavicle. And the last thing is the humerus, which is just this arm bone. So let's get the scapula on this, on the back view. And from the back, you actually do see it because you have the ribs, right? The rib cage here. And then the scapula actually sort of floats on top, but not like it's not connected to the rib cage at all. There's actually muscles that go underneath 
uh, the scapula that are attached to the rib cage. So this is kind of floating. It's just like whoa, floats. So here we have the scapula coming from here on the back. And then we have, remember this part, this thing, it actually comes forward like that. So then we would see that coming. And it goes forward to meet its buddy, the clavicle. So here's the clavicle and the scapula's thing coming around. And they, I mean, they meet as in they're touching. This spine thing touches the clavicle. Maybe I can draw that better. So uh, you have, let's say, this is the sternum with the clavicle coming around. Goes this way, this way, and it's got a little thing here, and then that spine thing, that this part comes out and touches this, and then it goes back here, and you have the rest of the, the scapula. All right, so there we have that, and then we have the humerus here. And the humerus is sort of here, and then you have that bump. Remember we talked about it, that it this part in the front has a bump right here. You get that bump here, and then you have this, which is the humerus, which is the arm bone, the funny bone. And there, so you have the humerus here, and you have the humerus here. So that's all the bone work we're going to deal with. I know it's it's tough. This isn't like a very easy anatomy lesson, I suppose. It's a, it's kind of harder. But I think it's pretty important to to know this stuff uh when you're dealing with the shoulder just because if you don't know this it's really hard to make sense of everything. But if you do know it, it might be a bit of a struggle, but you can you can get a better idea of how to actually deal with with the shoulder. So that's the skeleton portion. Oh, and get the humerus here. Here, so the way I do it is I always usually just start with a circle and then just create these parts coming down. So like that and then that. Okay, so now let's deal with the muscles, also known as muscles, also known as muskiduskis. And we're going to start with, um, let's just start with the neck to begin with. So let's just get the neck in there. And I'm just doing the sternocleidomastoid muscles, which come from uh, just behind the ear to the sternum and the clavicles. Okay. And you got to make sure it fits in that pit of the neck that we created earlier. So there, so there's a neck. So now, and let me, no, no, that's fine. There's a neck and there's a neck in this one already. So that's fine. Now let's talk about the trapezius. So the trapezius, I think I mentioned this in the last video I did on the, uh, the male torso as well. It starts in the back of the neck. So this is the back view. Let me just label these back, front, and side starts in the back comes down and now it connects at the end of this part of the scapula so this this part that comes up and actually now that I think about it I think I did it a bit like okay so let's say this I'm just gonna outline the scapula so there's this part that comes forward I think I probably oversimplified it because it is a bit more complicated because this part comes around and you've got a bit of a curve and got like a notch here where the humerus inserts then it goes around. Okay, so this trapezius connects here to this part on the back like so. And so we can 
get that on, or before we do that. So it connects here, like that, and then there's like a gap here where the seventh cervical vertebra is, which we're not going to deal with right now. But it comes down, and then it also connects all to this side of the scapula. It goes down. And so it creates this uh, trapezoidal shape, like this shape, which is why it's called a trapezius. I mean, it kind of looks also like a star, almost that. But yeah, that's the shape of it. And so from the front, see, here's this part right here is the same as this part right there sorry for the ugly arrow um so okay so it'll come around like so and it attaches behind the neck attaches behind the neck here so that's the outer portion now there's also an inner portion and remember how we said the the clavicle has those three well, let me just get on the back quick it's there Okay, so it has that those three parts, right? It has this part, and then it comes towards us, and then it goes across. So really think about these three parts. So now the first segment, this right here in this first segment, this is where the trapezius attaches to in the front. So that's why those those segments were really important because it's a connection. And on the side, see, let's say this is the the first segment, this is the second segment, the third segment, so it connects here. So it connects to that first segment like so. So now we have this part of the muscle, and then this part's more hollow, but this is the, uh, the heavier part of the muscle, it's right here, and it connects here, and then on the back it's just, you know, taking up everything. So there's that, and then the same thing here. The first part of that segment of three segments is where it connects to. And there we have the trapezius. Now, the friend of the trapezius, remember we said like uh, clavicle and scapula were good buddies, like holding hands <laughs> right here where they connect. Well, the trapezius and the deltoid are also good buddies. They're good friends. And so on the back, the trapezius, see it connects to the spine on this side. Well, the deltoid connects starting on this side of the same, the same thing. And deltoid's gonna go about halfway the length of this humerus, so about here. Let's mark that on all of them. You can go about there. And so yeah, it connects, it starts from here and it's divided into three parts. So right now we're gonna do uh, the posterior, the back part of it. It's gonna come around and it's gonna wrap around towards the front, okay? So it's going like this way and then that way wrapping around. I can do that better. This way and like that. And there's the humerus. Hopefully that makes sense. So there's that. And now the thing with the deltoid that's important is uh, a lot of times I see people do it like this, where it's really the most far out part is near the top, and then they kind of go down. Well, actually, the most outward part is near the bottom so you get this kind of shape for the deltoid so remember this is just one of the portions because there's three portions so this is the back portion it comes around now the front portion see how the trapezius connects on this part of the last third of the clavicle on the top part same as here connect on the top part same thing with the deltoid this time connecting on the bottom part, but again, on this third, and it comes down like so, and 
comes around. Now, the back portion comes around and connects to this point, and then the deltoid is split into, again, three portions, but uh, the next portion, like the first portion and second portion, they're split not at this point, but about halfway. And now within this area is where the bicep is, the chest muscle, the pectoralis, it connects on, say we had this third part here, which is where the deltoid connects. Then you have the part coming towards us, right? Not much is connecting there. Then you've got this part, which is where the pec pectoralis muscle connects and that goes down. And so what happens is you get this hollow area here, which I talked about again in the previous video. So you got the hollow here, you got the bicep or the pecs coming down, connecting here, like so. And then you've got the bicep coming down like this. And the good thing with this, uh, the deltoid where it comes in, is that this part where it connects, which is also where the third portion or the back portion and the middle portion are attached to, this splits the arm in two, um, not, not like really splits it in two, but it divides where the bicep and the uh, brachialis muscles, so here's the bicep, it's in this area, and the brachialis is just behind the bicep, and it kind of shows up a little bit, and the triceps, so once you've got the deltoid in the front and you see where it meets, then you can easily split the biceps and the triceps because the deltoid really divides it. So, and then you have the pecs kind of following down this way. So I hope that makes sense. It's, it's pretty useful. Uh, let's do the side. So you got the trapezius connecting to this part you got the deltoid connecting here. Now something that is difficult is because this is sort of going in space, it's hard to figure out what to do in this area. Or at least for me it was really hard because I don't know, like, okay, do I just do that for the shoulder? Because that doesn't, that kind of looks like it's just glued on then, right? And what I do is I usually just, I indicate this part. So let me use red. I indicate this part and on the back I indicate this part. So that would be like here and on the back here. And then I sort of lightly go over. Maybe I'll add some shading here. But that's really what I do uh, for, for the deltoid and it comes down like so. And then as we said it splits the triceps in the back and the biceps and brachialis, which here. So that's why deltoid's good. And then at this point that it splits, that's where the back portion and the middle portion connect to. So they all are going towards that point. And then the front portion connects halfway halfway down where we, where we use this connects right there All right oops what am I doing this connects here yes this connects here right so what happens is it kind of connects halfway through the biceps and then you've got this shape so, hmm, I think that's most, most of the difficult part. Um, so let's do a top down view because that will show some other stuff. So here's a head and here's a nose. Let's put some ears and a 
back of the head. Okay, and then you've got like the shape is a diamond. Now it's not like a diamond like this. Think of this type of diamond and then squish it. So it's like that. And then round it out so it's like that. And then pinch it in the middle parts. So it goes in like this and in like this. So we get this kind of shape. So let's do that. Got this kind of diamond dish shape. And the front, like the chest, I think it depends on the person. Sometimes the chest is more out than the nose. Um, you know, if you stand up straight, if you kind of lean forward or you're more hunched, then maybe the back is further out here and the chest is more here. But for this, let's let's put the back around here. Actually, the back still is usually further out than that. So, let's say around here, and then it comes forward, and we get that. So this is the shape of the whole body. But now let's put in the clavicles. So the clavicles, and then it'll be easier to see in a top down view. They go across like so, right? And let's say it goes like this is the distance, so then we can divide it into three. So, and then they go like this way, and then this way. And I mean, I might be exaggerating it just a bit because it's not like a super severe indent like so, but it's, oh, it's pretty, you know, it's mildly exaggerated. Let's just put it that way and they connect there and then let's do the same for the other side comes around connects like so and then you have you have the rib cage of course and the rib cage is more fat in the middle narrower at the top and then you've got the scapula notice the scapula is at it's at a bit of an angle it's not just um, it's not like that, right, on the back. It's at an angle. So these little Im angles are important. And then you've got that spine thing that comes out, touches, gives a high five to the, uh, to the clavicle because <laughs> they're best buds. And yeah, that has that part that comes forward. So there, then we have this. And then here where they meet is where you get the humerus, the, the arm bone. And now remember that all along the spine is where the deltoid starts. And then at this part, it's where, like this is the third, right? Right here we have this third. So I'll just put it in red where the, the deltoid is, uh, is connecting to. So this part and this part, oops, no, this part. Okay, so these parts are where it connects, and that's also, if you recall, that's also where the trapezius connects down here, so this part. So we can get that. This is all the trapezius. And then the deltoid comes around, kind of gets flat against this bone. Unless you're really well developed, then you'll get that middle portion as a bump you get the back portion as a bump and you get the front portion as a bump so this is where you get the three bumps on the deltoid it's more visible looking top down and yeah so really what you get is like this shape so if we really simplify it you've got like a like this shape and then you've got this is the trapezius. It's going to look sort of like a teardrop from top down. See, because it goes like, let's just do it in green. Occupies this area. And then you've got 
the deltoid in this area. So, so very simplified, it would look something like that. And that's again a top down view. So, and it's really important to see this shape because, okay, so you have the chest muscles, right? And they're all here and they're connecting down like so. But it's really important to get that feeling of uh, how this part right here is facing forward and then this part faces forward for the chest muscles and then this part is facing at a different angle so if you are painting that shows that these two areas are similar in catching the light and then this is a plane change so it will get more or less light um, and I mean pretty much I think that's it let's see let's just do a three-quarter view here's the head gonna get in the neck and this is more how I draw I don't really um, you know I don't map out all the proportions because at first yeah maybe it's helpful but later just getting mileage will help you um, you know freehand things and guess at things um, let's say the next we said this was three quarters so okay so it's going like let's get some perspective Okay, pretty extreme perspective. That'll be fine. Get the ear in. And now when I draw the neck, I tend to feel out the forms as I draw. So like, uh, you might be able to see it as I do. It's hard to kind of explain, but, so let's say I'm drawing the sternocleidomastoid. I go this way. And then I get the back of the trapezius, but then I start doing these type of strokes. And I'm not saying this is important or even necessary, um, but if you remember my coil technique video where I show foreshortening and I use this coil thing where it you know, gets bigger and smaller to indicate how things are coming towards us, it's sort of the same idea where I feel out the trapezius and then I get into the deltoid and you can get the triceps and you know that the, the deltoid in the middle separates the biceps from the triceps so get that that's kind of how I do things so yeah create that um, so let's get the collarbone comes this way then it goes back and then it comes forward again and then where it comes forward is where the uh, the deltoid connects so in this case, I did sort of a, a ring, like a U-shape, and then you can connect the deltoid on top of that U-shape. And you get those three. One, two, three, three bumps, three segments of the deltoid. I got that. And then you've got this part with ha which has no connection you got this part so then here's that hollow area and here's the, the pec muscles coming around and then on the other side just see the the trapezius but it's going behind right it's going behind and connecting back here so we just see this part of it showing up and then we get the chest muscles in front and then we get the, the collarbone, the deltoid. Because the deltoid always is below the collarbone. That's something else that's important. You don't want, you don't want to have a figure. They got a neck, they got a body. And so let's say these are the collarbones and then you have the deltoid doing this. Not coming over, no, no, no. It's not gonna do that. It's gonna come, and you don't want it to do this as well. You want it to it's big and then bigger near the bottom um, so 
you got that. Now, one thing I haven't covered is, well, okay, but what happens if you raise your arm? So let's quickly deal with that. Well, if you raise your arm, I'm gonna start with the head, get the rib cage in here. And so what's gonna happen is the collarbones are gonna get raised. So it comes forward, goes back like that. And the deltoid is connected here from this portion. So let's say the arm is doing this. Fine. So there's the humerus. Now you have the deltoid connecting to this part, but because it's lifted up, it's going to bunch up like so. And then you'll get it from the back. The scapula is also going to be raised. So you've got this bunching up up here and it connects like so. And then you get the trapezius, which comes around and connects to this portion as well. That's going to bunch up like so. So let's draw in the clavicle again. So that's where the clavicle is or the collarbone, however you want to call it. And this is where the deltoid is and it's also in the back and then the trapezius is coming down like so. And then we've already covered what happens down here in, in the previous video. You got the chest coming up and you got the lats in the back. You get the bicep here and you get the tricep behind the lats. So, yeah, something like that. That's very messy, so let's just lower the opacity and do a bit of a bit of a cleaner version. Trapezius bunching up. All right, so pretty much I think that's it, and I hope it helped, and thanks for watching.